Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch 2020, our new show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hatfield, and as usual, I'm joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Howdy. Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Hey there. And today we are joined by IGN's tech editor, Bo Moore. Bo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Damon. Today we're going to talk about televisions, specifically... Do you need to buy a new one to enjoy all those fancy next-gen features later this fall? And if so, which TV is the best to get? Uh, Bo, 4K televisions uh, really came down in price during the current generation, became much more affordable. Lots of people picked up a 4K television uh, during the life of the PS4 and Xbox One. If you already have a 4K TV, what, what's your sort of current recommendation going into next-gen for PS5 and Xbox Series X? You have a current... Uh, 4K TV, you probably don't need to upgrade right away unless you're really looking for the like highest end hmm. experience. The the biggest thing that the new crop of 4K TVs have is they also can do 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, the the 4K itself, that's just your visuals. It's the refresh rate of uh, you know when you're playing a high speed game like Doom or, or other shooters. Uh, having that frame rate that can go above just 60 FPS, which the next-gen consoles say they're going to be able to do, mm -hmm. that's really the difference. On the same boat, I think we all picked up 4K TVs fairly recently in recent years. Uh, so that's good to know that you might be saving us a little bit of money. Uh, but if we're looking at specific, specifically some of the next-gen buzzwords about the next-gen consoles, things like ray tracing, 8K, uh, like you mentioned, 120 frames per second, 3D audio, looking at these things specifically, uh, something like ray tracing. Is there any sort of like uh, specific television you need to buy to or to own in order to be able to appreciate what ray tracing? You don't. Uh, ray tracing is fully handled on the game side. In this case, it'll be the the hardware of the consoles as well as the games themselves being built and programmed to have ray tracing in them. Uh, but that's all. That's just done game side. So the TV doesn't need anything special in order to take advantage of that that's different though from something like hdr where hdr is a thing that the the tv has to be capable of uh so uh hdr that that's where you you have to hit a certain the tv has to be certified or a certain level of peak brightness uh, i believe 400 nits is kind of the baseline for one there's a couple of different hdr standards and it gets kind of confusing but mm -hmm. 400 nits is, is sort of the baseline and then a thousand nits is really the gold standard for for what uh true hdr when, when people are talking about now jonathan i think you upgraded to a 4k tv when you uh got a ps4 pro did you end up getting a sony television i did so uh i actually used an ign uh breakdown of the best tvs to buy for 4k gaming at the time so that was early 2018 and i ended up going with a ps4 pro and a sony x 900 f i believe it was um but bo yeah i i was curious um do you think you know, as a PlayStation player, if I'm thinking about upgrading to a PS5, is there any real benefit beyond maybe like some compatibility stuff with buying a PS5 and a Sony 4K TV? Or does it really not matter the maker in that case? As far as I know, there's there's really no benefit uh, there. Like you said, there might be some type of kind of really niche use case where there's maybe like a, an app or something that maybe the, the PS5 will let you stream to the tv without being plugged in or something i don't know uh but but as far as i know like there, there's not really any specific case like they're not going to play nicer than usual now ryan i think you and i might have the same television how are you feeling uh uh do you feel like you're all set for xbox series x yeah i went with the lg b9 uh now the there's the c9 which I, there were the c9 was slightly more expensive which one did you go with damon i did I did the C9. The C9, yeah, I believe the C9 has a slightly uh, better processor in it, but from everything I could read, uh, I, I used artings.com. They've been a great resource kind of in the home theater community. They, they do a ton of HDTV breakdowns, and they seem to indicate for gaming that there was not really a functional difference. So I was able to get a deal this past Black Friday on the B9, um, quite frankly, I'm not even sure if the B9 is still available because TVs do roll over year after year, but it's been great so far. I think the, the, the only hang up with this one is there's sort of some lack of clarity on, is there going to be a firmware update to enable the 120 Hertz, uh, capability that, that mm -hmm. Bo was talking about, but 
as far as everything else, I mean, you know, OLED is, I, I waited, you know, Jonathan went a little earlier. I kind of held out and I knew I wanted something that I would spend more on, but I wanted it to last ideally the entire next console generation. And so I thought, well, OLED's got the great picture with the black levels. Yeah, you got to watch out for the burn in a little bit, but by and large, yeah, it's uh, it's been a beautiful set and I, I'm definitely happy so far. Bo, what about 8K? The new consoles are supposed to be uh that's supposed to be supporting 8K, but of course there isn't a lot of 8K, 8K content out there yet. When is that going to be a real consideration for people buying new TVs if they want to take advantage of that with their next-gen consoles? Uh, honestly, not for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. 8K TVs do exist. You can buy them, but they cost like $35,000. Uh, <laughs> they are truly aspirational tech right now that only the highest of the high-end you know, moguls and medium people just like uh you know artists etc that that just really just want to spend a lot of money on something really fancy uh the as far as what the consoles can do they you know microsoft and sony have been saying that they are capable of 8k output which really just means that the the port in the back can which is an hdmi 2.1 port that the the hdmi 2.1 cable which will then plug into these tvs it's just capable of carrying that 8k signal but that doesn't mean that the games are going to be in 8K. I'm almost certain that no developers are going to be designing for 8K unless, again, they're really just doing it as a proof of concept type thing. The gotcha. original Xbox was capable of 720p technically, but I think there were one, maybe two games ever that actually <laughs> took advantage of it. So I feel like it's pr it might be that kind of situation in the end. Wow. Yeah, it, it may end up being where as we approach the middle and the tail end of the console this upcoming console generation maybe by then in five or six years the you know the the tech will have caught up with 8k and maybe there will be a lot of affordable 8k tvs in the marketplace hmm. um and if that's the case then yeah you know developers might go that route but as of right now i, I really don't see it being you know it, it, don't worry about saving your money for that 8k tv right now you're totally fine with 4k now, Jonathan, Sony's been talking about uh, the 3D audio capabilities of the PlayStation 5. Uh, could you or Bo speak to uh, you know, whether or not our current TVs can take advantage of that, or do we need to have a, a fancy uh, sound system or a sound bar to go along with our consoles? Well, yeah, I, I was curious to hear from Bo about uh, what he thinks we should be buying alongside you know, just a 4K TV for this gen, because at least how Sony's been talking about the 3D audio so far, to me, it sounds very much like this is... Right now, the uh, ideal is to be using a surround sound headset uh, to be able to take advantage of the 3D audio and that they're working to approximate it on TV speakers and surround sound systems, but that's still that seems like a little further down the road at this point. Yeah, that's exactly exactly the case. Uh, to take advantage of that, the, the earphone, the, the ear mapping that Mark Cerny was talking about, um, yeah, that's for headphones. Um, but yeah, if you, to go along with your TV, Sound bars are really great because they kind of approximate a surround sound and, and really take, not fully take the place, but can get you something very close to a full surround sound multi-speaker system with really just one central unit that shoots out around your room. Mm -hmm. So, Bo, if someone did want to uh, get a new TV uh, to prepare for the next-gen consoles, is there a, a certain set that you would recommend, and would you recommend the same TV for both the PS5 and Series X? Yeah, uh, to answer your second question first, um, there, as far as I know, and I, th you know, there, there could come out with uh, Sony, Microsoft could come out with some sort of specific tech that, that favors one or the other. But as far as right now, uh, a single TV will be good for whatever you're plugging into it, whether it's a PS5, a Series X, or even a PC. Uh, as far as specific recommendations, so the LG set that Ryan got, uh, I'm a big fan of. We, we recommend the the C9. Uh, that top end uh, version uh, that's that's yours. Um, yeah. and and one of the things that's really nice about the C9 set is in addition to being four k and one hundred and twenty hertz, uh, the other big thing for this kind of new generation of TVs that they've never had before is variable refresh rate, which is a bit of technology that up till now has really only been available on computer monitors. And even then it was kind of a a rare thing. So PC gamers will used to be used to hearing G sync or free sync, uh, which is is what lets you, your, your graphics card can output a signal that then the TV can match the refresh rate to the incoming FPS 
and that prevents screen tearing when you're you, you don't you don't have to lock your frame rate to a locked 60 or 30 fps in order to have no screen tearing and so the the lg uh and a lot of these TVs now have variable refresh rate. What's interesting specifically about the LG set is it is also G-Sync compatible, which doesn't really matter for the consoles, but if you're plugging in a gaming PC and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, it'll also play nice with that variable refresh rate. Um, all right, viewers, we want to hear from you. This is something we asked you a few weeks ago, uh, but we want to sort of check in. We asked if you, you know, based on what we know now, do you plan to upgrade to a new television for a next-gen console later this year? Make sure you vote at IGN.com and we'll share the results with you next week. Just like this, we have the results of last week's poll. We asked which of these possible 2021 games were you most excited for? And you picked Diablo 4 uh, as the game you're most looking forward to. That's beating out things like the next Dragon Age and Elden Ring from From Software, which I see people clamoring for information on all the time. Uh, Jonathan and Ryan, does that surprise you that Diablo 4 was on top? Uh, not at all, although I'm very skeptical that it'll be out in 2021, <laughs> but it's Blizzard after all. They tend to take their time, but that's yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, I'll cross my fingers for 2021. It's, uh, yeah, Diablo has has just been stronger than ever. Uh, Four had a great initial showing at BlizzCon last year. I'm very jealous of the IGN folks that did get to go down and play, especially because there is no BlizzCon this year, so right. we probably won't be playing it. Uh, th during the course of this year. So, uh, yeah, I, I voted for Diablo 4 myself in that poll. I'm, I'm mm, all interesting. in. Interesting. Jonathan, how about you? Uh, I'm not surprised at all. When we were uh, covering BlizzCon last year, the Diablo 4 reveal in the gameplay was, I, I believe, the highest traffic story that day tripled as, as big as the second place story. It was just hmm. so massive for the IGN audience, so it's not a surprise. Um, I do think Elden Ring, once we see more of that game, because right now we've really only just seen that reveal teaser trailer last year, uh, and that's all we have to go off of. I'm sure once we see more of that, you know, From Software is so beloved, and uh, obviously people love George R. R. Martin's storytelling with Game of Thrones. So seeing how those two come together, I think, is going to be really exciting once we have something to actually see. Now, before we go, next week's episode of Next Gen Console Watch could possibly be a big one. Uh, a lot of industry insiders seem to believe uh, Sony is planning a big PS5 reveal event, possibly for next week. Uh, Jonathan, how are, you, how are you feeling about that possibility? It's time. It's fine. It, it feels like hmm. the right time. You know, we, we've talked a bit on this show as well as on Podcast Beyond about how giving some explanation for why Sony hasn't mentioned much so far. And I think it's really because they have had The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima and Iron Man VR to show to people and get out the door. And we've had a Ghost of Tsushima state of play, a Last of Us state of play, and an Iron Man VR demo. So obviously those games still have to come out, but they've been really hitting the promotion of those games now. And I do think it's really finally time to start talking about what comes next. Sony announced a while ago that they weren't going to be at E3. Mm -hmm. And now here they are. They've been quiet, quiet, quiet. And <laughs> if, if in fact it's next week, they're going to be talking about the PS5 almost exactly right when E3 would have been. But we'll yep. take it. Yeah, for sure. That will make for a very exciting episode next week. Fingers crossed. That will do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch 2020. Thank you to Ryan, Jonathan, and Bo. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern, with more PS5, Xbox Series X news, possibly a lot of PS5 news. Uh, so we will see you then. The biggest gaming event of the year is IGN's Summer of Gaming, and it's almost here. Tune in beginning Thursday, June 4th to see the latest and greatest in game reveals, news, trailers, next-gen coverage, and more. And on June 5th, we kick off our first ever IGN Expo, where you'll get first looks at world premiere game trailers, exclusive game demos, and interviews you won't find anywhere else. IGN's Summer of Gaming, only on IGN and IGN One on your Samsung TV Plus.